Uh, so good to be inside the house of God. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want to direct your attention tonight to the book of 2 Corinthians. Uh, we'll probably cover some a lot of bases here. And trust me, folks, this is um, something that that I really felt compelled to teach on. And uh, so uh, this is something very important in our church uh, for our young folks, our older folks, everybody. Amen. Praise God. Second Corinthians chapter number 10. Amen. Chapter number 10. If you have your Bibles, praise God. If you have a cell phone that could use a Bible app, amen. If you have some form of Word of God tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 1 says, Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Amen who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. And I beseech you that I may not be fitted, whereth I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Walked according to the flesh. Amen. I want to teach on this subject here. Winning the mind wars. Winning the mind wars. Amen. Like I said, if you have a pen and paper, uh, you may want to write some of these notes down, some ideas. Um, amen. You can be seated tonight. We have, this is just basically uh, lesson number one. There are several lessons in uh, this study and, um, and I want to cover them, but we are not going to be able to cover them in one service. This will take several services, so we will uh, do this um, every other Wednesday. Not every Wednesday night, but every other Wednesday, so we'll do this twice a month, uh, this lesson. But I do want to start here, Second um, Corinthians that we just read, amen, chapter number 10, amen. But in uh, verse number three, which is the next verse, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly, worldly, humanistic, amen, but are, but are mighty through God. In other words, divinely powerful. For the pulling down of strongholds, destruction of fortresses. Amen. Bringing down every high thing. In other words, lofty ideas, uh, imaginations, uh, vain imaginations. The Bible talks about speculations, human reasonings. Amen. That exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Amen. And taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, what are strongholds? What are strongholds? And how are they raised, amen, against the knowledge of our minds? How do they come, how do they come up against our minds? Amen. A stronghold is a set pattern of thinking that is contrary to the word of God. Anything that goes against God's word is a stronghold. Anything that fights against God. It's basically a mindset uh, that is against the word of God, against God himself, and everything that has to do with God. So, we were all born physically in this world. Obviously, we were born in this world, but we weren't born spiritually uh, we were born alive, amen, physically alive. But when we were born physically alive, we were born spiritually uh, spiritually dead. So we didn't have the Holy Ghost when we were born. We didn't have the Spirit of God. Ephesians chapter number 2, uh, verse number 1 through 3, uh, we learned uh, 
to live our lives independently of God. In other words, when we were born, we were born in a world that separates ourselves from God. We don't have anything to do with God. Infants have no beliefs or attitude about anything. Amen. Or, any, uh, or everything we learn in our early years, they're learned in the environment that you and I grow up in today. So whatever we learn in life, it follows us in today. So how, do, how, do, how, how does one do that? How, how do we get to that place? We learn from prevailing experiences in our life. Attitudes that come from our homes, neighborhoods, families, parents, beliefs, um, schools that your kids come up or you come up in, uh, friends that we've had. These childhood experiences, they help see our new, uh, our, our world view. Uh, they, they help us understand the kind of world we live in today by the experience of our lives. So, uh, amen. In other words, if you grew up around alcohol, you understand what it does to you. Somebody, you can go to an experienced Pentecostal, experienced Christian, and try to bring alcohol in their lives, who wasn't raised in that environment would not understand what that's like other than somebody who's been raised in that environment. So we understand that. Amen. Overcoming strongholds, amen, in your mind. Overcoming strongholds. Beliefs, attitudes. Attitudes are formed in our minds due to experiences, traumatic experiences, if you would, uh, that we go through in life. And that could be with divorce. Um, it, it could be uh, uh, with a death of a loved one. Uh, it, it could be with abuse, physical abuse, uh, mental, uh, physical, anything in that nature that, that could cause tr uh, 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 traumatic experiences in our life. Uh, because of the intense of that traumatic experience, it leaves a long-lasting impression, amen, in our minds, amen. So those impressions, they, they can develop strongholds in your life. They can develop those. And uh, we were all conformed to this world when we came into the kingdom of God. We are given an opportunity to be transformed, not conformed, but transformed. Amen. By the renewing of our minds. Now this is important. Uh, even as Christians, we can still listen to worldly wrong music. We can still read books or materials that's damaging to our souls. Uh, anything we put before our eyes, or uh, anything material, anything like that. Or we could actually engage in conversations that could be endangering our soul, our walk with God. It could have an effect on us. Why? Because we live in a fallen world that's content with this world that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ like we do. So it's a constant battle, not for the sinner, but it's a constant battle for the, for the saint because we've got to fight this one thing called flesh. Carnality. Our, our, our bodies, our minds, our hearts. If you think... I'll tell you what, they always say, follow your heart. Follow your heart. And that's good because uh, we follow our hearts after the mind of God. But I'm going to tell you something, your heart can slip up and trick you sometimes. And I'll, I'll give you a reason why. There's things called temptation. Everyone say temptation. Temptation, temptation often comes by the way of a thought. The most important thing that we can do is take hold of that thought before the thought can actually take hold of you. What are you talking about? Well, what I'm saying is, we're all human. We're all going to think crazy stuff. Things are going to come past us by. And they're gonna, and you're going to think, why in the world would I even think that? I thought I was a Christian. I thought I had wings. Right. Right. It don't work that way. You're human. You're going to have those thoughts. But here's what you need to do. Stop it. Before it goes even further. We can stop the mind. Somebody once said. That you can't stop the birds that fly over your head. But you can prevent them from making a nest. Yeah. You can stop those thoughts. They will enter your mind. But you can stop them. Don't ever dwell on those things. Take the thought captive. 
take it captive, and then submit that thought to the Lord. Say, God, here it is. I don't understand why I even would think something like that. Sometimes the devil talks to us, and he will. And when you got the Holy Ghost, you will understand his language, and you will hear him, his voice try to speak to you negative things. Amen. So try this. Try threshold thinking. Everybody say threshold thinking. The, the definition for threshold is entrance, the beginning, the entry. But when we do this, we've got to practice this all the time. So we've got to practice a threshold th a thinking. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse 13 states that God has provided a way of escape with every temptation that comes. Look for the way of escape. Of course, it's going to take some time to develop some discipline and some practice. So we've got to always make sure we practice this every single, every single time. Take the escape, the, the escape route. Amen. The moment that an ungodly thought comes to your mind, a person that struggles with lust, with adultery, uh, sees a pornographic image, receives an email... That's ungodly. You know that it would mess you up if you dwelt on it. Amen. They have the opportunity at this point. You have an opportunity to say my relationship with sin has ended. I don't have to go any further. Just because it enters your mind and your thought doesn't mean you're sinning. The sin begins when you begin to dwell. And when you begin to pursue those thoughts that are negative. Praise God. So, we don't have to be controlled by this thought or lifestyle anymore. Amen? Amen. It's over. We, we don't have to go any further. But when you don't have the Holy Ghost, you, you, you're free-minded. You're, you're free to escape and, 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 and jump the fence and run across the NFL field. Do what you want to do. When I say run across the NFL field, is they've got people that do it illegally. They've got to be chased out. <laughs> that didn't happen down there, did it? Okay, good. Praise God. Usually that's an ugly sight. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but what we need to do is we've got to capture this thought, folks. Capture it basically at the threshold and bring it to the obedience of Christ. Bring it to God. Well, I, I, I don't understand why that's going here. Uh, uh, I'm just, I'm not going to respond to that situation. I'm not going to respond to those. So don't respond to anything negative. It's going to enter there. But you can stop it any time. You can walk in a store. And uh, you walk in a store. And a young guy will see a girl who's basically just half naked. And uh, he's going to struggle. Because he's going he's gonna to be tempted. His mind's going to be tempted. Or the same vice versa. Man, a, a good looking guy will walk in a store. And a female will be tempted. But at that point, when you're at temptation, stop. You can stop it. Don't do what I used to do when I was in the world. When I was in the world, I would make things up. If she was coming this way, I'd be like, look this way. And she walked away, I'd be like, I was fell up. And the reason why I say that is, <laughs> is because I didn't want to look like, you know, uh, some sort of pervert up there, you know, just checking out girls, but I was 14 years old in the world, you know, just young guy, and uh, just doing dumb things. But when you come to that point, stop yourself. Don't look at it. Just keep moving forward and, and, and love your God. Give that thought to your God. Say, God, here you are. Here's that thought. Amen. Is this making any sense to anybody? I'm only saying this because it's real. It happens every single day. Every single day. And the reason why people struggle every single day is because of these strongholds in their mind. That they do not allow themselves, they get themselves caught up in things, and it turns into sin. Amen. Praise God. So you got to say, I'm going to be obedient. I'm not going to go to that bar. I'm passing by that bar but I'm not going to go by that bar. I'm passing by the marijuana smoke, but I'm not going to smoke that, cig that, that cigarette or, or marijuana. I'm passing by pornography, but I'm not going to engage in it. 
I'm, I'm going to go and move forward. I'm going to move forward. Amen. That's keeping the mind of God. When you move forward, if you hesitate at the threshold, if you hesitate at this point, it's always going to be a losing battle for you. Because you'll never be able to succeed. But if you capture that thought and give it to God, you're going to win every time. Because the Bible says resist the devil. Resist temptation. And the devil will flee from you. You just got to resist. Everybody say no. 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 Raise God. No. 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 Everybody has... Did you know that you have a no button? You do. But we use the yes button more than we use the no button. Ah, man, but it, it, it just looks good. We got to learn to use the no button when things occur in our life. When certain situations arise or, or, or uh, uh, there, there, are, tr- there, there are, are trigger situations in every person's life. And, and, and when you mull, mull over and thought over and over and over and over again, uh, and, and, and that negative thought over and over in your mind, uh, your, your emotions will become affected by this thought and the likelihood uh, of my yielding to the temptation of acting on that thought is, is increased because I thought I could stop. But, but once you don't stop and you just keep thinking on those thoughts and those negative thoughts, it does not work. Why? Because our emotions are a product of our thought life. Your emotions can take over your, if you allow your emotions to take over. And uh, we may not be able to control our emotions, but we can control what we think. We can stop. This is why I tell our young men, this is why I tell our young women, or anybody for that matter, if you're in a room and you're a man, and you're in a room, and a lady walks in, and you guys are alone, and there's nobody else around. It's called spiritual adultery. Keep yourself safe. Don't keep yourself in a situation, don't put yourself in a situation where you can be in trouble. Where somebody can accuse you of something. Where the devil can accuse you, because the devil wants to accuse you. <laughs> well, he wants you to fall and fail. Where you cannot get to the point where temptation will override your emotions and your emotions will begin to take over. And then you will step into the boundary of sin and allow it to take place. Threshold. Stop at the very beginning. Stop right there. Wherever it's negative, whatever is bad, at that point, uh, we've got to say, no. I'm not going to go any further. Amen. Proverbs chapter number 23 For as he thinks within himself, so is he. Many Christians, they don't feel saved. They don't feel saved at all. A lot of them, they don't feel loved by God or the church. And the reason why, I'll tell you this, the reason why they don't feel this way is because uh, of old thoughts that come back to them and causes themselves to back up against the knowledge of God. And they revert. I know what that's like because I've sat there before I've done the dishes. And then the thought would come up. Man, he really messed me up. He talked against me. He did this and that. And I get mad. And the more mad I get, the more I dwell on it. And I'm thinking, oh, man. And then, and then I want to go on social media and post about it. You know what? <laughs> Facebook has become a platform of venting. <laughs> if you're going to vent, vent to God. Ask God. Talk to God. Amen. Don't destroy your own credibility because of social media because everyone's going to judge you for it. You get on there and you post some stuff. There's some stuff, brother. I'll tell you what. There's stuff on Facebook that apostolics post that I just, it makes me scratch my head and makes me wonder what in the world, what kind of formula do they even have? It just doesn't make sense. Amen. When these... Thoughts are pulled down, our emotions will begin to conform to the reality of God's love. If we choose to believe the lie, our emotions will take us further into temptation. If we choose to believe all these negativity things, 
uh, around us and everything that everybody has to say, amen, then we are just going to allow ourselves to get in more trouble than where we are when we started at the threshold. You're not in trouble at the threshold. You're not in trouble at the beginning. At temptation, we're all going to be tempted. It just depends on how far will you take that thought. Will you give it to God or will you dwell on it? Right. Say, well, I'm, just, I'm going to live on it. I'm going to tell you something. Spiritual strongholds. Um, spiritual strongholds. They're, they're, there's so many strongholds. Inferiority is a stronghold. Nobody is born inferior to another person. In other words. But you can develop this if you keep getting the message from the rest of the world that always tells you they're stronger than you. They're smarter than you. They're prettier than you. I'm better than you. Unforgiveness is a stronghold. If you have kept resentments, hurts, or anger Instead of stopping it at the threshold, it's going to take hold of your life. If you allow the past to destroy you, amen, then this will lead to bitterness and a stronghold of unforgiveness will start to develop in your walk with God. You know why it's hard to live for God? Because people don't stop at the threshold. They allow it to take control of them. Say, I'm going to just going to move in your life. And you cannot have the freedom of God. You can't have freedom of worship. You cannot. Let me tell you something. Depression is a stronghold. It's a stronghold that's rooted in heaviness. It, it, it is a result of prolonged grieving or unresolved anger that opens a door to a stronghold of depression. Depression is also a result of hopelessness. A stronghold of fear comes from a combination of rejection, worry, unhealthy desire. To always be in control of every aspect of our lives instead of trusting in God that you serve today. Amen. Having a wrong perception of God. Amen. And not having a love relationship with God. Also a result in a stronghold of fear. You begin to fear. You don't fear God, but you fear everything else. The Bible declares, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because for hath torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. 1 John 4 and 18. 1 John 4 and 18. Most strongholds are rooted in the unwillingness to complain. Completely trust God. Somebody who doesn't trust God is bound by strongholds. You have to trust God. Learn to let go. Learn to, to, to trust in God. When the bills come, learn to trust in Him. When temptation arises, learn to trust God and say, God, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you my life. That's the reason why I went full time in pastoring this church because I felt... That if I can give my attention 100% to the house of God, that God will bless me. And I know it's going to, I know it's, it, it's a slippery slope on that because um, it, it's not consistent. But I said, God, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to trust in you. Amen. To give myself to you more. Amen. And not worry about other things uh, in, 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 in a job or, or, or other stuff that I don't want to worry. Because I'll tell you what, when I was working at the prison, it was hard when you get off work and you get in an area where you have reception and your phone blows up and you have all these messages, you have all these voicemails. Pastor, I need this. Pastor, I'm, I'm going through this or there's a situation happening. And then, and then you have to respond to these situations. Um, I tell you what, I, I I'll tell you right now, folks. I didn't, God didn't call me to be a part-time pastor. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm, if we're gonna have revival, I'm gonna do this full-time. I'm gonna do everything I can to be at the church. Everything I can to be there for God. Everything I can to trust in God. But all that comes by trusting in God and saying, God, I'm gonna trust you. Put your trust in God. Say, God, here we are. 
Amen. Praise God. When we begin to trust in the arm of our flesh and not surrender our life to Jesus, amen, we open up ourselves to Satan's lies, amen, and we shut out the opportunity that God wants to give us to give us the miraculous, to experience the miraculous, amen. So our focus shifts from God in his might to our own abilities and our strengths. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's easy to talk about it, but it's, it's hard to actually go through it when you've got to really trust in God. If you want God to bless you, bless God. Don't, don't act, don't say this, I'm going to, I need God, I need God to do this, I need God to do that, but you're not going to be faithful to God. If you're faithful to God, God will be faithful to you. But don't expect God to come to a lurch when, when you're in a bind situation and you've always left God. God will bless you, but you've got to put God first and trust in God. That's the only way God helps. It doesn't help just by, well, I'm not going to pay my tithes. I'm not going to live for God. I'm just going to come to church, hit and miss and this and that. But I expect God to be there. No, no, no. Don't expect God to do that. If you want a move of God in your life, be there for God. Put Him first. There's an author actually by the name of Beth Moore who wrote a book called Praying the Word. Writes... Virtually every stronghold involves the worship of some kind of idol. If you, if somebody says, oh, I don't go to church, I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't worship God. I don't, I don't go to church. Yeah, they do, because everybody worships. It just depends on who and what you worship. I don't go to church, but I'm going to go to this nightclub and I'm just going to juke and jab every night. Well, that's your God. Praise God. you got a platform. you got the music, everything, and you're doing the dance and all that. Praise God. Everybody has a God. Just depends on who and what you serve. What God do you serve? Do you serve Jesus Christ or do you serve drugs? Do you serve alcohol? Do you serve music? Do you serve money? Do you serve women? Or do you serve the Lord? Because if you serve God, I guarantee you, It's not going to work out if you serve him and something else. Because God says you can't serve two masters. You either love one and hate the other. He's a jealous God. Praise Praise God. God. The stronghold of pride is associated with the worship of self. What we're talking about in idols. Self. In one way or another... Something has to become God in our lives, in our walk with God. The object of our chief focus, filling our minds with Scripture, acknowledging the Godship of God is a crucial part of renewing our minds until we turn from our idols to the one that God, amen, uh, we will never find liberty if we do not process that. For where the Spirit of the Lord is... There is liberty. The NIV says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom to worship. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 verse 17. As long as our minds rehearse the strength of our stronghold more than the strength of our God, we will be important. It will be, amen, a, a powerful Walk with us with God if we continue to stop everything at the threshold and say, God, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna stop it right there, and I'm allow you to take control. I don't understand. Here's a, here's a thought that just crossed my mind. You can give it to God. You can either not, you can stop and not contemplate on it and say, you know, I'm just gonna go about my business. But if you really want to have a walk with God, you say, Whoa, God, why, t- yo. Here you go, God. So God can understand. As we pray the word of God, acknowledging his his limitless strength and dominion, truth will begin to surface that's been covered by lies. It's in our weaknesses where we find his strength. Where we fall, we can arise and come with God. And we may be forced to realize that our perception of God is something that we ourselves 
have conjured up and not the one true God at all in our lives. This actually may be too much for some other folks. Some people may not even can comprehend this kind of, uh, this kind of thinking or process uh, because some of us are what we call conventional Christians today. In other words, if we believe our God is small, then our walk with God will be small. All right. Amen. If we believe that God can't do it, then God won't do it. All right. That's right. If you put yourself in that position, you've got to own that position. But if you say, you know what, God's bigger than this. He's bigger than my mind. He's, uh, God can deliver me from these thoughts and from these, these, all these transgressions that allow myself to get out of my flesh and, and do those things. God can overcome it. You're not bound by your mind. Don't let your mind take over control of your life. You take control over your mind. And say, you know what, this is not going to happen. Capture the thoughts before the thoughts capture you. Say, nope. Out of here. Praise God. That's not our God at all. Amen. Truth has to set us free. The truth may be that we've carved a God out of our own image, assigned Him, amen, the utmost and noblest of human characteristics, amen, unintentionally envisioning Him to be more of a superhuman than actually a most high power God. May God remind us daily, folks. Daily. Amen. No matter what kind of obstacles we face, that we are loved and empowered by the one who brought this universe into existence. Amen. With just one sound of his voice. One breath. Amen. Out of his nostrils that God created this world. God that blew a wind and parted the Red Sea. The God that is so big that created this universe, heaven and earth and hell, amen, can stop anything he wants to. That goes to your mind. But you got to give it to God. You know why? Because nothing is impossible for my God. Nothing's impossible. Becoming responsible for our thoughts. Once your consideration of a temptation triggers an emotional response, you will act upon the choice and own that behavior. You will make the behavior your own. Amen. You are responsible for your actions because you have failed to take the thought captive when it first appeared at the threshold of your mind. When it first comes there, we got to stop according Amen. To a study on uh, human behavior, if you continue to repeat an act for about six weeks, it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. This is what they this is what they studied on the on the human behavior. If, if you act on a, a a situation for more than six weeks, it becomes literally a habit all the time. A habit. You can have a habit of sitting and not even realize it. You could be doing things that you're not supposed to do. And you're doing them out of habit. Because you never stopped at the threshold. You never stopped where it came in. You allowed it to, to, to process and to take captivity of your thoughts and your mind. And your emotions have taken over. And so this is where you override the opportunity where you could have gave it to God and say, God, here's my mind. I need a renewing in my mind, God. That's why the writer said those things. Because he knew exactly... What, what his flesh was about. Now, if you continue the bad habit long enough, it will become a stronghold. It will become a stronghold. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, in the past, from counseling many Christians, apostolics, counseling them, um, in the past, of course, that were, these folks were filled with negative thinking. Amen. That eventually uh, affected their walk with God because they allowed their, their mindset to get to that place. And I would tell them all the time, you know, hey, this is what you got to do. 
this is what needs to happen. But they don't let it get past. They, they just let their mind take control and they, they allow their emotions to override their minds. And don't let and don't give it to God. This is this is why we emphasize every service of an altar call. Because the altar is like a computer. It's where you come and delete all the bad stuff. And you pour it all out. And you allow God to take everything, every captivity, every thought, every sin, everything that you have. And give it to God. And leave it at the foot of the cross. And say, God, here's my mind. Here's my heart. Here's the sin that I've committed today. Here's everything that I've done wrong. I spoke against my neighbor. The thoughts that... that you, did you know that even when I pray... This is going to blow your mind. That when I pray... This is alright to pray this prayer. Because I pray this all the time. I know I'm going to put myself on blast. But I pray to God and I ask God to forgive me for the thoughts of my mind. <laughs> Say, God forgive me if there's anything in my mind, in my flesh... That, that, I, need to, that I need to remove God... Please remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want no thoughts to enter in there, to creep in there, and to reside in the brain. Where it could affect my spirit. It's not bad to do that. You can do that. Praise God. Because we've got to ask God, renewing the mind. Renewing the mind. Practice that. Practice praying that. And asking God that for overcoming your mind. That's why it's important to pray for the mind of God. Because we want God to reside in our, in our spirit, in our mind. If we've been trained wrong, well guess what? We can be retrained. Amen. We can't. If we have learned and believed a lie, we can choose to believe the truth if we wanted to say this is what I'm going to do I'm going to believe that computers they can be reprogrammed they can fill your mind uh, with God's word and his truth Colossians 3.15 let the word of Christ dwell in you richly when you fill your mind with the word amen and the, with the word of truth you're going to recognize all the lies of Satan that's why he that's why the writer wrote Study to show thyself approved unto God. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Amen. And expose him immediately and take the thought captive. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1 and 13. He urges us to put away fruit, fruitless fantasies. Fruitless fantasies. Vain imaginations. Turn to God whenever you have anxious thoughts. When you have anxious thoughts, Philippians 4 and 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your, let your request be made known to God. When you do this, you expose your thoughts to Jesus Christ. You say, God, here's my thoughts. Here's my failures. Here's everything. Here's my worries, God. And God takes over your thought life and gives you peace, amen, and understanding. When you give it all to God, Philippians 4 and 7, the peace of God shall keep them as in a strong castle or a strong tower. Your heart, amen, is the seat of all your affections and passions and minds. Your understanding, judgment, and conscience thought of Jesus Christ. We've talked about the heart before, but now we're talking about the mind. Because they, they both play in a similar role. But where it starts is in the mind. Where it starts. That's why when people sin, it gets to their mind first. And then it gets to the heart. And what gets in the heart is what acts on emotion. It's the center playground of emotion play field. This is where it all happens. But this is where it all starts. That's why we ask God for the mind of God. That's why we turn to the Lord and we praise Him and we love Him. And that's why we do what we do in Pentecost. Because we want the mind of God. And we want God to renew our minds. And we have to. Once you get the Holy Ghost, it's not over at that point. It's not. It's a beginning process of your walk with God. Of renewing your mind. Renewing your spirit. 
When you get the Holy Ghost, just because you get the Holy Ghost doesn't mean you're saved. It means you got to work on being saved. You got to work on your mind. You got to work. We every here's what every single day we don't fight the devil every day. Stop giving that guy credit. What we fight is ourselves. We fight our flesh, our minds, everything that comes. Yeah, Satan can enhance that and he can cause us to stumble by throwing the thoughts out there, by posting the images on there, by giving you the emails and all kinds of stuff. But it's up to us to say, no, I'm not going to live in the past. Amen. I'm delivered from sin and I don't have to live in sin anymore. I'm going to turn away from all those things. So, amen. When once you see it in your mind, get it out and say, God, here are you. I don't know why it's even there, but God, I'm going to give you the praise. If you come across temptation, start worshiping God. If something happens and it's all in front of you and you know it's something that the devil knows that he's going to destroy your life with, if he can get you to submit, all you got to do is start worshiping God. Just start praising him. Say, God, you're bigger than that thing. I know when summertime comes, there's a lot of guys that that they got a chiseled chest body and all this stuff, and they take their shirt off and they jog around the college. They jog like this. <laughs> Ladies, what you got to do is you're like, my God's bigger than that chest. <laughs> Praise God. At the threshold, stop. And, and, and say, God, you're, you're bigger than all these thoughts. You're bigger than all these things. You're just a big God. Just start praising. You get to that point, praise God. Amen. At the border, we stop foreigners. At everything, we stop. At the threshold, we've got to stop everything that comes against God. Everything that wants to come against God. Stop it. Stop it. We've got to learn to capture every negative thought before that negative thought captures us. And say, I'm going to give it to you, God. I'm going to give you my thoughts. I'm going to give you my life. I'm going to give you everything and make a commitment. The, the, the sad thing about this is that I have a friend. We're not live, are we? Okay. Because <laughs> I know he's on my friends list, but <laughs> he could be watching this. But I've got a friend that used to be in Pentecost. Who was in church before I was. Who won me to the Lord actually. Uh, went to Texas Bible College. St studied under Jack Cunningham. And all these great preachers. David Bernard and Paul Mooney and all these guys. Studied under them. Got his license. Evangelized cross country the world. Preaching here and there. UPCI Church was an amazing evangelist. But today he's not living for God. He's got over eight kids from three different women. Three different marriages. And just fell out of the will of God. Because he told me this. He said, because I asked him this. Not too long ago. I asked him. I said, brother. I said, what's up, man? Where, 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 where did this all start? What happened? You used to be phenomenal. He said, brother Langford. He said, it all started with my mind. I started letting things get into my mind. And I started. It, it was like my mind was a filter. And I just let things pile up. And pile pile and and I just I, I just couldn't receive it no more and I and I just couldn't believe the things of God anymore and I started letting things come into my mind like theology and theology is one of the main things that messed him up and he began to think maybe there is two gods maybe there is not one God maybe there is this and maybe there is that and he, he it just messed him up and the devil played basketball inside his mind and said you know what I'm winning I'm getting every hoop and he's losing the battle. That's why it's important that we've got to ask God to renew our minds. Not just our hearts like the Bible says. But he says, correct, he says, renew my mind. The writer understood that. Because he knew on a daily basis that if he didn't ask God for self-control of his flesh, that the devil could take play and cause him to fall because of his mind. Whatever goes up here. As long as it don't get here. You're okay. 
If it's negativity, sin, and it gets up here, don't let it get here. Once you allow it to get in this place, which is called your heart, it gets in your spirit. Amen. You'll start to have an effect in your walk with God. And it won't be a positive, it'll be a negative effect. So let's renew our minds. Let's renew our spirit every single day. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's all stand tonight. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Renew our minds, God. Renew my thoughts. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Why don't we all lift up our hands. And let's ask God at this point. Amen. That he would renew our minds tonight. So don't let ourselves take over ourselves. Allow the Holy Ghost to take control over our thoughts. You'll have temptations, yes. You'll have them crazy thoughts that'll come in and they'll shift in. But, but you need to practice at the threshold. Stop every negative thought that comes in and give it to God. Say, God, here you are. Here it is. Here's my mind. I want the mind of God. I want nothing but the mind of God. These altars are open for anybody who wants to pray. For anybody who wants to give their mind and their heart to God tonight. Say, God, I need you to observe me. I need you to do something in my walk with God. I need you to do something in my life. Hallelujah. Let's give our hearts and minds to God tonight.